From Fox 5, Washington, D.C., two buses of migrants arrive outside VP Harris's residence at the Naval Observatory in D.C., as per Fox News. And Fox 5 D.C. actually has video of it. These individuals were sent by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Now, there have been questions about the efficacy of this, namely for me, when I said, why don't you just deport these people? They cross your borders illegally. You get them on a bus, you send them back to the country where they came from. And the issue is, apparently, the states don't have the authority to do that. There's nowhere they can send them. It's the federal government that has to deal with deporting them back to other countries. And that kind of makes sense. You know, Texas is not going to be negotiating with Mexico. It's going to have to be the federal government that does, which creates a problem for Arizona, for Florida, for Texas, for many of these states that deal with a massive influx of illegal immigration. So what are they doing? Well, they've been sending these people to New York, to D.C. Here's the best one. Bravo to Ron DeSantis. Claims credit for sending two planes carrying migrants to Martha's Vineyard. Oh, man. Can only imagine that the multi-million dollar property, properties that sit there, um, and uh, that, that the owners of these properties are, un- are not too happy with how things are playing out. That's brilliant, man. Of all the places you could send this, send it there. You got a bunch of wealthy liberal elites living in massive mansions, people like Barack Obama. Now, I don't like the idea of these people being used as pawns, these, these illegal immigrants. Not a fan of that. The issue is, what are we supposed to do? When Joe Biden won't secure the southern border, when they encourage people to come, when they completely ignore I mean, Kamala Harris won't even go down to the border for a long time. The policy is a complete failure and the border is porous. Well, something must be done. They can't just stay in Texas, in Arizona, in Florida. It's absurd. Well, something has to be done. And you know, you, you've got Ron DeSantis and Abbott taking a cue from Joe Biden himself. You see, the Biden administration was secretly trafficking migrants on planes, children, no less. That's right. The Biden administration was engaged in human trafficking. That is not an exaggeration. It's overt. That's what they were doing. And they were flying these people across the country and dropping them off in random places. We heard from police in Ohio. They were pissed because ICE would go to them and be like, can you hold these people for us in your jail for just a minute? And they'd be like, sure. And then ICE would dip out and be like, ha ha, your problem, your problem. You got to and it's, and it's a very serious problem for these communities, because what are you supposed to do for these people? Did you just open the door and you got homeless people? Well, looks like we got a solution. Two buses being sent to VP Harris's residence. Ron DeSantis sending them to Martha's Vineyard. And now we got this. New York City Mayor Eric Adams claims the Big Apple is near breaking point after Texas bust 11,000 migrants to sanctuary city. You want to be a sanctuary city? Then so be it. Good on Abbott. Good on DeSantis. These people are evil. These states, these cities, they want to gloat and break. We're a sanctuary city. We, we are in favor of migrants. It's like, OK, if you're in favor of them, how about we foot the bill to send them your way? No help. Emergency. Well, D.C. tried calling in the National Guard. Scumbag, evil liars. They want these people dead. Obviously. There's a little hyperbole in that. I don't think Kamala Harris and Eric Adams are like twirling their mustaches being like, let's kill migrants. They want them to wander aimlessly through the desert. They don't care what happens to them. That's what they're encouraging. That's what they're doing. Seeing that video, and I can't stand these these urban liberal Democrats for this stuff. A dead little girl face down in, 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 in shallow water because making these journeys It's extremely dangerous and children have gotten sick and died. And when there was a border patrol agent who picked up a sick child and desperately tried to save that child's life, the media reported child dies in CBP custody. What they didn't tell you is that it was urban liberal Democrat policies encouraging this, saying we're sanctuary cities, but they don't actually deal with the problem. And then when someone died and CBP tried to save the life of that child, they made it seem like it was this, it was CBP's fault. These people are evil. They are scumbags. So you know what? I'm glad this is happening. I think it's a problem that the borders are porous. I think it's a problem. These people don't get the help they need. 
But if you are a city that comes out and publicly states you're a sanctuary city that wants to protect these people, then we will send them your way because you apparently have the resources to do so. Oh, I'm sorry. Now you're crying about it because they're evil. Fox 5 reports. Fox News reports two buses of migrants arrived Thursday morning outside Vice President Kamala Harris's residence at the Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C. Now, this is what I don't understand. The video is is from Fox 5. It was from it was on Fox from Fox 5 on, on, on YouTube. Approximately 100 migrants, mainly from Venezuela, arrived just before 7 a.m. from the Rio, Del Rio uh, from Del Rio, Texas, and offloaded near the Naval Observatory's main guard gate. The migrants were picked up in Eagle Pass, Texas, and were sent by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Fox News reporter Griff Jenkins was there as Secret Service agents arrived at the gate. Take a look at these photos. So here we go. So that's happening now. That, that, that's breaking news right now. Take a look at this one. From this morning, is Ron DeSantis claims credit for sending two planes carrying migrants to Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts. Oh, my stars and garters. And we have this one. So this is from MV Times, Martha Vineyard Times. Migrants land on Martha, Martha's Vineyard from yesterday. So uh, a group of 50 Venezuelan migrants, some of them children, landed on Martha's Vineyard on Wednesday. The migrants arrived by plane. According to Jeff Freeman, airport director at Martha's Vineyard Airport, the name of the charter was Ultra Air Charters. He said it was two planes that arrived at the airport and not one, as uh, originally reported. Fox News is reporting that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is taking credit for sending the migrants to the island and shared video with the news outlet. In 2021, DeSantis vowed to spend $8 million to send immigrants out of state and mentioned the vineyard as a destination. His press office did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Freeman confirmed that one of the planes in the video being aired by Fox News is the plane that landed on the vineyard. The Times was told that the refugees arrived via Texas, but the situation has been fluid and there's been a lot of confusion surrounding today's event events. The Times was told it was a company that organized the flights, providing individuals with some cell phone numbers before departing. Migrants used translation apps on those phones getting off the plane. Take a look at this. Let me pull up the uh, good old Google Maps here. You can see what Martha's Vineyard looks like. It's an island. This is hilarious. Martha's Vineyard. I should have pulled up Zillow to show you the price of homes. Now, there are many homes on Martha's Vineyard that, that I would say are, are none too expensive, you know, relatively. A couple hundred thousand dollars. They're just very small. So they are relatively expensive. You know what I mean to say is some people, you know, they'll buy a hundred to two hundred thousand dollar house. You can find comparable properties. They're just a lot smaller. You know, like a one bedroom, one bath or something like that. But a lot of the properties here, make no mistake, this is ultra elites. Barack Obama has a multi-million dollar property here. Tons of million dollar properties. Yo, a house that would cost a million bucks in uh, a rural a rural area or, or maybe like a suburban area is like $10 million in Martha's Vineyard. I can only imagine right now all these uppity liberal elites are sitting there going, oh, 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 oh. I can't believe it. Ron, oh, harum All angry that he's doing it. But these are the people that fund political action committees. These are the people that fund commercials. They support this. They push it. And now they can reap what they have sown. Bravo, Ron DeSantis. Bravo, Greg Abbott. You know, at first I was saying they should be deporting these people. But as pointed out to me, they can't. And I'm like, OK, well, then if they can't, then this is the next best next best thing, I suppose. Because these, these places, D.C., New York, Martha's Vineyard, they think they will be immune to the destruction that they sow. They will place people in your city, disrupting your economy, disrupting your livelihood and your job, and hurting the migrants themselves. Well, you know what? Now these people can have a good time hanging out in Martha's Vineyard. Hey, I think it's brilliant. There's a there's a post coming out from, uh, uh, I think, from Martha's Vineyard where they're like, we've taken care of our migrants. We've given them beds and places to sleep. And I'm like, good. Who's complaining about that? It's crazy. Martha's Vineyard wants to, you know, these people want to act like they're better men and all that stuff. And they're making it seem like we're mad they're helping these people. No, this is the point. These people, there's no room for them in Texas or Florida. Over Overwhelmed based on the border crisis. Florida, of course, is bordered by water, but people still come in. So if you're a sanctuary city, state or otherwise, I don't know, I guess Martha's Vineyard was an island. Does that count as a city? And you like these people and can help them, then everyone wins. What's the problem?
Why would you act like, I mean, I'm not going to be upset by this. I'm actually, I think it's fantastic that they're giving these people beds and places to sleep. That's wonderful. You know, they're certainly wealthy enough to handle it. Bravo. Uh Uh-oh. What's happening in New York? New York City Mayor Eric Adams has admitted shelters are at the breaking point after Texas bust nearly 11,000 migrants to the sanctuary city. Oh, well, that's just too bad for you. You're a sanctuary city. Where should these people go? Huh. In a statement on Wednesday, Adams expressed frustration over Texas Governor Greg Abbott's busing policy that has inundated the Big Apple with thousands of migrants and left a group of 60 without access to, sh- to a shelter on Monday. In this new and unforeseen reality, where we expect thousands more to arrive every week going forward, the city system is nearing its breaking point, Adams said. As a result, the city's prior practices, which never contemplated the busing of thousands of people into New York City, must be reassessed. While some may want to use these extraordinary circumstances as an opportunity to play an unproductive game of gotcha, we remain focused on supporting each of these individuals and families who need our city's help. Yeah, I'm totally down for that. Thank you, Um, Eric Adams. That's just wonderful. Oh, you're at the breaking point? You'll have to figure it out. I mean, this is your policy. You voted for this. You encourage this. The people in these cities, they vote for your, your money to go to these individuals. No, no, no. You vote for it. It's yours. I remember reading about this uh, old proposed bill back in the early 1900s. And they said anybody who favors war, it's the, uh, who, who, who votes in favor of it, would have to volunteer for it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. I think we should do that. And they said, no, 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 we can't do that. And it doesn't mean that our armed forces don't go to combat. It means that when it comes to war, we say, OK, you want to go to war, uh, you have to fight it. And then there'll still be people who volunteer for the army. That's fine. We'll actually just have more troops. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, people don't want that, do they? These rich uppity liberal types, they don't want to go fight a war. Oh, no. And many of these neocons, they'll be like, yeah, we're America, you know, go to war. But they don't want to fight it, do they? To be fair, though, neocon families are more likely, it's my understanding, to have people in the military than liberal ones. So, sure. But it's this simple. These people in these cities, what do they do? They vote for gun control in like the Appalachian Mountains. It's like, yo, I live in the mountains. There's bears. I should be able to have a gun. There's a video out of Italy where a person, a hunter, I don't know if I think it's a man, it might be be a woman, is uh, charged by a wild boar, but they're only allowed to have three rounds. So they go bang, miss, bang, no effect, bang, no effect, start beating the boar with the with the weapon, with the with the with the barrel. You see, that's insane. People who don't know what it's like to live in areas want to, in certain places, want to impose their rules on you. They don't know what it's like on the southern border. They don't know how bad it is. But these people in these cities, they vote for people like Biden. And then Biden just eviscerates our border security. So, OK, we'll send them your way. Yeah, you're going to be you, you, you're going to you're going to struggle under it. Well, someone's got to take care of these people in New York's wealthier than anywhere else. Right. Among the latest group of migrants who arrived in New York this month included 44 from El Paso which has seen such an influx of migrants that its shelters were forced to reject nearly 1,000 people who are pictured sleeping on city streets. You see, you're a sanctuary city. We don't want these migrants homeless on the streets. I got it. We'll send them your way. Sanctuary city, y'all can take care of them, right? Look at this. We don't want people to suffer. That's this horrifying. That's terrible. Uh, I, I think they shouldn't come here in the first place, but I guess sleeping on an American city street is better than where it is they come from in many instances, particularly the Venezuelans. And I'll tell you this too, Venezuelans deserve asylum, hands down. The leftist policies that have gutted and destroyed Venezuela, I'd rather have these people leaving socialism and being like, I will trek thousands of miles risking my life because I believe in something better. That's kind of, that's the work ethic we need in this country. I'm, I mean it. While once again rebuking the busing, policy, uh, busing protest policy carried on by officials in the Southwest, Adams said the city has been working to accommodate its newest arrivals since May. This administration, on its own, has safely and efficiently provided shelter, healthcare, education, and a host of other services to more than 11,000 people, predominantly from Central and South America, who are seeking a better life. This is a remarkable achievement that has required and will continue to require the efforts of our entire team and has become a ra- reality that no city official, advocate, or court ever could have contemplated. I'd like to point out, though, it ain't all bad for them, for the Democrats. They're probably cheering this on. You see, what we end up seeing with COVID, you get moderates and conservatives fleeing these cities. Now they're going to bring in a lot of migrants who have a tendency, when able, 
When, so when people migrate here and then get the ability to vote, becoming citizens, they tend to vote Democrat. More importantly, however, citizenship is completely irrelevant to the, to the question. Congressional seats are apportioned based on population size, not citizenship size. That means these cities are probably happy to have these people. Yup. They may feign, oh no, oh, don't send these people here. Oh, what's that? The census is coming up. Granted, they got eight or so years before the next census, but they'd love to have families come and establish here. They're going to give them sanctuary access. And then the census is going to happen. And they're going to be like, guess we need another congressional seat because so many people live here. That's why they do it. You know, um, with COVID and all that, census happened. And I think New York lost a congressional seat. But that's also an electoral college vote. And that's how the dirty game is played. These people are evil. The system is broken. We need to do the census based on citizenship, period. But this is one way they've eroded the system. California, they have what, like 52 or some odd electoral votes or something like that? Some insane number. And they're a sanctuary state allowing people to cross in why it gives them more power in the federal government. That is a perverse reverse incentive. We should not be incentivizing people to destroy and erode this country for federal power. That's what they do. So therein lies the double edged sword. The short term, people are laughing and gloating at these cities because now they have to deal with this. In the long term, it is giving them power. If anything, Texas and Arizona should Okay, fine. These people can stay here. I guess the concern is when they get the right to vote, when when they pass citizenship, or if they ever do, maybe not because they're illegal immigrants. There's concern they will vote Democrat, but I think that's a that's, that's misguided. I do. I think these uh, uh, southern states would be better off just saying fine, okay, Biden, because these are red states. It's going to give um, it's going to create more red congressional seats. So here's what they should do. Here's what you do: find a rural area. Take these people, build shelters for them, help them be safe and live healthy and productive lives. And then when the census comes around, you are going to have more people get more votes. And lo and behold, Republicans end up winning. And the Democrats are going to be like, how are the Republicans winning? They're losing the popular vote. Well, it's because the Electoral College is based on population size, not citizenship size, which means you will see non-citizens not voting, but the more non-citizens there are in an area, the more congressional seats there will be. If that's what Democrats want, then so be it. Republicans shouldn't have to fight so hard against it. The problem, I suppose, is the resources. So maybe the state should then demand federal funding or get it somehow. Get it somehow. Ultimately, I think we're, we're just we're watching the decline of empire. The arts are gone. People are fighting each other. Brother against brother is just getting insane. People have lost their minds. Story after story, I've heard Larry Elder mentioning, you know, good friends he had just have don't care to read the evidence. He said, I want you to read this news story. And they're like, no, I won't do it. And that's just crazy. It is literally crazy that there are people who say, I don't want to know the truth. And you're like, please just read the news. And they won't and they don't. And here we are in a country where people are so filled with rage because consensus reality, reality has not been met. Amazing. Sad and scary. And that's why I think we're on the verge of civil war because of things like this, but mostly on the consensus reality question. There are many people who uh, you, you, you see it. They say it. They say, just believe what you're supposed to be, what you're told so that we can get back on track. Wow, that's insane. Why? So you can be led like lambs to the slaughter. I mean, the figuratively. But like to be a lemming walking off a cliff because the lemming in front of you did it. And I mean the video game lemmings, not the real ones, because the real ones don't actually do that. Apparently the story is like Disney, like shuffled them over the edge of a cliff, forcing them. <laughs> That's so brutal. But the idea is the lemmings just blindly follow. And they follow even to their own destruction and demise. That's psychotic. We should be working towards a better future. We should be helping these people and helping everyone in this country. Yet for some reason, there are people who say, I don't care how bad it gets so long as you fall in line. Yeah, that's a creepy mentality to have. And that's what leads you to the gulags. So you can suffer. You can be a Borg clone. Fine. I won't. Never will. Won't do it. There is something afoot in this country on this planet that we don't know. Now, some people think there's a grand conspiracy. But certainly there is a greater agenda and a greater emergent phenomenon. That is to say, 
We don't know exactly what's going on at the highest levels because of confidentiality, top secret, things like that. We know there are agendas in government. It's just it's the truth. It's a fact. And we don't know what their plans and missions are. Beyond that, there's a greater emergent phenomenon. The dominoes fall as they lie. And we don't know exactly where that will lead us, but something bigger is happening. And what I mean to say is with these migrants coming in, with crime, with what Democrats are doing, all of this, whether intentional or not, will lead us somewhere. That is the emergent phenomenon. The actions of the humans, whether intentional or otherwise, will result in a greater consequence. I don't know what that will be, but it's interesting to watch it play out. This big machine a churning. How will the dominoes fall? You ever see those things they do where it's like they flick the domino and then all of them fall over and it makes a picture? So it's like a bunch of white dominoes on top, but when they fall down, they're different colors on the back. And so it makes an image. That's what I mean. We don't know what the ultimate image will be. What will this country look like? What will remain after everything happens? Not entirely sure, but it's happening right before our eyes. And it feels like we're about humble chickens in a chicken coop, unaware of the predators that lurk outside and what will happen when those gates come crashing down. The night is always darkest before the dawn. Maybe this signifies something dark is coming, but maybe from the darkness there will come light. And as bad as it gets in this country, it may ultimately be a cleansing of sorts. So I don't think it'll be all bad. I think I think we're going to be all right. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.